Um, in just shy from a month from now, uh, Seattle Center Monorail will be turning 58 years old, so 58 years of service in the city. The monorail was built for the 1962 World's Fair, and during the six months of the fair, these trains carried over 8 million passengers. So that's equivalent to about 45,000 passengers a day. This system was designed to move people. Since 1962, the monorail has been the fastest way to get between Seattle Center and downtown Seattle, and we're thrilled to announce a key transportation partnership with NHL Seattle for the arena that's opening in 2021. Monorail station improvements are an investment in an enduring and iconic system, leveraging the vision that city leaders had nearly six decades ago. The station improvements that are being outlined today will double system capacity, improve accessibility, and better connect the monorail to the regional transit network. We can increase capacity by decreasing the train's dwell time in station. That's the amount of time that the trains are loading and unloading passengers. The changes will also improve connections to street level and to the downtown transit tunnel. And these upgrades will improve passenger experience and allow us to provide significant lift during post-event surge. We know that public transportation is an important way that people will get to the games at the new arena, and we're excited to be partnering with NHL Seattle. It's now my pleasure to introduce Todd Lewicki, CEO for NHL Seattle. Well, good morning, and it is a great day for Seattle NHL. I want to call out a few people. First, a couple of my bosses are here. Dave Wright, who is our vice chair. Dave, if you'll raise the hand. There he is. Jay Deutsch is here, and Jay is one of our great investors. There's Jay right here. I want to call out our partner, Tom Albro, who has just been an absolute pleasure to deal with. And this wasn't a business deal. This was a deal talking about making something so special in our city better, and we completely related. Uh, so Tom has been an incredible steward of the monorail, and we're proud to be your partner, sir. Um, <laughs> I want to call out Robert Nellums. Uh, Robert Nellums has been an incredible partner to us. He's represented the city at every turn of the way. This is the largest bet ever made in the history of sports in this town, and you have been a great partner, and today is another great step in our partnership, sir. And then I want to call out a gentleman named Jay Westcott. Jay, please raise your hand. Come on, come on forward. I want to tell you this man's story. Come here, Jay. So Jay is in charge of all the mechanical repair for this amazing system. And this system has history, and some of the parts are history. So they've had to, they've had to manufacture the parts hand by hand, and the, and the care and, and the knowledge and the expertise is extraordinary. And that's what his resume says. But his resume also says he played hockey at a very, very high level and was one of the final cuts for the 1980 U.S. Olympic team. So, um, so you heard about the emergency goalie. Um, and Jay will talk. Thank you. Well, for us... It's really exciting that after all of this history, we think that the monorail's best days are in front of it. And that is a really, really exciting thing. Um, it was a bold vision with the World's Fair, and now it has a second act. And that's how it should work. And it's now officially part of our DNA because we believe in second acts. We believe in taking what the leaders created for the World's Fair and making it better. Eight million riders enjoyed this system. We just talked about that on a per day basis. That would fill our arena three times. So this was a critical link between Seattle Center and downtown, and it's going to become that again. Through the partnership of the city and Tom, the monorail now accepts the ORCA card. We've seen ridership go up, and we've only just begun. Private investment, literally millions of dollars, is going to more effectively connect the monorail transit system to our regional system. It's going to connect Seattle Center to our downtown core and our rapidly growing 
Transit Center. Most importantly, it's going to serve our community. It's going to serve daily riders. It's going to serve music fans. It's going to serve storm fans. And it's going to serve hockey fans. Hockey fans with a free uh, transit pass on the ORCA card embedded in every ticket is a big idea. And we stand before you very, very proud of this announcement, these developments, these partnerships. And this is really the dream coming true of what it meant to revitalize our part of the campus and to play a role in the revitalization of the monorail. So we couldn't be more proud. I want to bring up our councilman uh, to have you come up and say a few words. So Dan, please come on up. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. This is great. It is great to see this public-private partnership that will benefit Seattle commuters, leveraging the immense public asset that we have here at Seattle Center and connecting it to downtown and the regional transportation network. It's going to be a number of years before Sound Transit gets here to Seattle Center, and I bet it's going to be here on time or early and under budget, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, and so. It is that we need to have these full capacity transit options and connecting the last mile between Seattle Center and our regional net, uh, transit network is so vitally important. We are, you know, I use the monorail to get here today and I am very excited for the increased speed and efficiency of getting passengers on board. Um, people across Seattle should be able to rely on transit and I'm really excited to see that all of the fans will be able to use the monorail just as all, all employees downtown should also have access to transit uh, with their ORCA cards. Um, one of the, my most exciting moments right now is getting to introduce Director Robert Nellum. So he's somebody that I've looked up to for quite some time because Seattle Center is a very unique public asset that it has the Space Needle, Chihuly, it has the Children's Museum, it has the Next president of the United States was here this last week. Uh, you know, we've got the opera, we've got the arena, we have Seattle Public Schools, all of these different assets here in one place. And Director Nellums and his team are able to navigate all of these different entities and bring us a world-class facility. So I'm excited for your leadership and I'm excited to introduce Director Robert Nellums. Thank you. Um, this is another great day uh, for Seattle Center. Uh, building on the acceptance of the ORCA card, Seattle Center's partnership with NHL Seattle and Seattle Monorail Services is now going to make much needed investments in the monorail system. Now you're looking at someone who is older than the monorail, someone who rode the monorail during the World's Fair, someone who was born and raised here, and someone who has always believed in this system. Um, and it is uh, uh, that connection for the last mile from the transit infrastructure downtown to Seattle Center. And I, I just want to say a couple things. One, I don't know about you, but we've always talked about having multiple options, multiple transportation modes, modes to get somewhere. And at Seattle Center, we'll say, well, yeah, you can, you can um, take transit, you can take light rail, you can, take, uh, you can ride your bike, you can walk, you can do those things. Now, I don't know about you, but when I tell my friends those are some options that they could take in lieu of driving their car, they look at me like I am old and crazy. And so this, these investments actually make those things not only realistic, but they will make them preferable. Because once you're able to get on the, moderate, or on the light rail from Northgate and come downtown in 14 minutes, and then take a couple of minutes to get up to the monorail and then take a two minute ride to get here and then maybe a three or four minute walk over to the arena or over to the rep or over to McCall Hall. That's going to be a much preferable route to take and a much preferable option to take, whether you're driving, walking, biking or what have you uh, than driving your car. And so I'm very excited about that. But I'm m even more excited about the fact that even though today we're talking about you know, the fans of the arena and the, the, the just incredible um, I, uh, notion of providing uh, ORCA access and, and, and um, transportation access with your tickets uh, for, for those fans. We're talking about creating an infrastructure that will allow all patrons of Seattle Center to benefit. 
So people are going to the theater or going to uh, uh, McCall Hall or going to uh, festivals or events, they're all going to be able to use this infrastructure. And that's what makes me excited. And so I would like to start off or end up by saying thank you to the partnership uh, with Tom and Todd, uh, Seattle Monorail Services and NHL Seattle. And I want to especially um, highlight NHL Seattle uh, for their vision and continued partnership and their continued investments into making this place work, be more efficient, and, and be a mode uh, that we can all be uh, proud of. And so I, I want to thank all of, all of you uh, for that, and I look forward uh, to these projects being completed and all of you joining me on the monorail uh, coming to and from Seattle Center. And with that, I'd like uh, to introduce uh, uh, Peter Rogoff uh, from Sound Transit to say a few words. How are you doing, sir? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Robert. You know, one thing we know in the transit industry is if you make it easy for people to use it, they use it. We just saw this here at the monorail. Just by making the monorail usable with an Orca card, they've seen ridership grow by 20%. Yeah. Now, we in the transit industry, we have all kinds of modelers and we like to predict what's coming. Uh, we, for the first time, ran a sounder train to the XFL Seattle Dragons game. And our predictions were off. We had 1,800 people on that train. It's just an indicator about what people want and the convenience of using transit to get to major events like this. I really want to commend NHL Seattle for making it easy. They are modeling a practice that I first saw years ago with the Phoenix Suns down in Phoenix when they expanded light rail. Basically, your ticket is your transit pass. And in the future, we're all going to be getting our tickets on our phone, and you're just going to be able to use this phone to enter the arena. You're also going to be able to use this phone to enter the light rail system. It's about taking link to the rink and making it easy for everybody. It also, you like that, huh? We spent a lot of time thinking that up. All right? But let me take it a step further, because it's... <laughs> In 2021, you're going to be able to take the link from rink to rink. Why? Yes. Thank you. Because in 2021, we'll be opening up light rail to Northgate just next year. So you'll be able to take link from Westlake right up to, the, obviously, the university, but onto the U District, onto Roosevelt, and onto Northgate, where NHL Seattle's headquarters are going to be, and their practice rink is going to be. So, link from rink to rink. Better yet, it's only gonna take 14 minutes. Think about that. Think about the time it would take to figure out getting in your car, crawling down five, finding a place to park if you can find one. Let's face it, we're doing this not just because it's the right thing, we're doing this because we're gonna have some congestion down here in Lower Queen Anne on top of what we already have when the arena opens. We're gonna need people to use transit. And my commendations for NHL Seattle for making it easy for people to do so. Added benefit, you don't need to just drink one beer because you're driving home. You could drink one beer every period. <laughs> Why not? You're not driving home. Or you could go and enjoy all of the uh, businesses and restaurants and bars here in Lower Queen Anne and, and the region uh, because you're not driving home. That's how we do it safely, that's how we do it efficiently, that's how we make it friendly for all of the ticket buyers and users of our new hockey team. So thank you for that. Let me just add one other thing. We're very excited about opening up to Northgate next year in 2021 and giving people the opportunity to take link from rink to rink. But just two years later in 2023, people are gonna be able to ride link from Mercer Island, from Bellevue, from Redmond. In 2024, you're gonna be able to add to that riding link to the rink from Linwood, from Montlake Terrace, from Shoreline. Also in 2024, you'll be able to ride link to the rink from Federal Way, from Kent, and Des Moines. We are on the cusp of really building out the transit network that is gonna really be a regional tool for everyone in this region. And I wanna just thank NHL Seattle again for having the, the, the vision to make it easy for their, their customers 
to use our system. With that, I'm going to introduce an excellent partner. This is how people often connect to Link. Um, and this is how I and so many other people get to work using King County Metro. Deputy General Manager Terry White is here to uh, amplify the message. Good morning. I got to say it, right? Link to rink. Got to get it to soak in. So we are all saying that when we get out of here. I, I too would like to thank NHL Hockey for bringing hockey to us. We are excited here. Uh, I, a couple other folks I want to thank, uh, Seattle Mayor Durkin and the City Council for all the work they were doing behind the scenes. I would like to thank uh, King County Council Member Jean Cole Wells for her assistance in making this day possible as well. And of course, uh, I'd like to thank my mobility partners, Sound Transit and the Monorail. Uh, together, that connectivity is how we will serve for hockey and the region as well. So on behalf of King County Metro, we're very excited to welcome NHL hockey to the Pacific Northwest. And when, when, when one of the fastest games in North America comes to Seattle, it's fitting that it is served by the number one transit system in North America. Our commuters, our riders, our business partners know, uh, and it's no secret, about 50% of those who commute through the Central Business District do it by public transportation. And our region's mobility network is bus, light rail, the monorail, the streetcar, and the water taxi. And this lets fans enjoy the ride, be safe, have a couple of beers, and avoid driving in that traffic. Now our new NHL team will be the first sports franchise in the region to adopt this innovative transit model. And it's only the third in the entire country. This is an exciting development that all of us hope to expand and eventually include more of the world class, the cultural, music, sports, other events across Seattle and King County. Now at King County, we believe the right to mobility is freedom whether that's freedom to get to work, to go to school, to buy your groceries, visit your doctor, or to be the loudest fans in the country. So in just over 18 months, we will have an improved monorail station. Tens of thousands of our, pa our passengers will ride to these events. We'll have new routes to keep people moving and moving to and from the arena uh, all across the country. At King County, we are ready for hockey. And with that, I'll pass it back to Megan. Thank you, Terry. Um, I just want to close up and thank all of you guys for being here today. We're so happy to have you here for this announcement. It's, it's a big one, and it's been a long time in the making. So thank you so much. We won't be taking questions here at the podium, but we are all available for one-on-ones with media afterwards if you're interested on, aboard Red Train. So thank you for being here. Have a great day, everyone.